Hi, welcome to the Kelly's Island Historical Association Museum here on beautiful and historic Kelly's Island. That's our museum on the right. The foundation of our organization is the German Reformed Church. It was built in 1867 from stone quarried from across the street. The church is one of two historic buildings under our care. This iconic building is on the National Register of Historic Places. Of course, the pastor needed some place to stay, and to accommodate him, the parish built a house next door to the church. The parsonage house was built in 1885. It shares the historic marker with the church. The Islands Historical Association was formed in 1980 to celebrate and share the island's history. There were almost 100 charter members. It was around this time that Betty Pape organized a community effort to research the many historic properties here, and there were a lot. This took several years of searching archives, deeds, ownerships, and interviewing residents. It's really hard to believe that these houses are all over 100 years old. Pretty much every building on the island has a very interesting history. The nomination package contained over 100 sites and was submitted in 1985 after an awful lot of work. In 1989, Kelly's Island was designated an historic district and its buildings were added to the National Register of Historic Places. This plaque appears on Kelly's Hall. So, with this incredible history, so well documented, and with so much energy and enthusiasm, a group of dedicated volunteers decided to look towards the future. We envisioned a museum to house artifacts that would tell the story of this small island. We spent years fundraising. We wanted a building, but did not want any debt associated with it. We held bake sales, we had cocktail parties, and we sold handmade quilts. Until we could get our museum built, we displayed some artifacts in the church and offered a small selection of items for sale in the smallest gift shop on the island. This was truly a grassroots effort and was accomplished by volunteers. Finally, and it took us long enough, 25 years later in 2005, we dedicated our new building. Our original displays were pretty much a bare-bones gallery approach. However, over the years, they have evolved. We now offer a more descriptive concept that allows our early settlers to tell their own stories. Once you enter the museum, you'll see that the displays are now organized by theme. Starting on the right, you'll discover our ancient history featuring fossils, the Indians and inscription rock, and our famous glacial grooves. Next is farm life, a plow blade from 1871, old tools, and a great story about how they brought cows over. You know, they had to close the streets to herd them to the farm. Plus, there are photos of Datus and Irad Kelly, who founded the island. Turn around to find items that would have been used in the stores on the island like this fancy silver cash register from 1894. It may have been used in Elfer's store. Around the corner, you find saloons. What a history we have here. Discover the legacy of the buildings that still cater to the thirsty crowd. Did you know that the village pump was once our post office? Or that the captain's corner was the island's general store? Check out our picture wall. Each one is an interesting story, from the Kelly's Island Wine Company to the winter mail boat. We even caught a quarry blast on film. Speaking of quarries, that's next on the tour. From the tools they used to the massive equipment that found a home here. These men worked with black powder, hand drills, and horse-drawn stone carts before they even started using dynamite. 
Then we move on to commercial fishing. The work was grueling, but it provided an income for our hardy fishermen. As we round the corner, we find our winter. Our intrepid islanders crossed the ice to bring us the mail during the winter. We had ice boats that reached 60 miles per hour, and islanders made their own sleds. Look, we found a wooden snow shovel in our collection. Islanders lived by the weather and relied heavily on our boats and docks to get around. Here we have a little bit of everything, traveling sea chests, the history of the boats that served the island, and a couple of unusual life preservers, one manufactured in 1944 and the other one was cork filled. When they weren't visiting the mainland, islanders spent time at home in comfort. The home life section features a lovely crazy quilt, bronze shoes, and those conveniences that every housewife needed. Laundry day consisted of a wash tub, washboards, and a laundry agitator, circa 1894. Just grab the handle, plunge it up and down in the tub, and the holes in the cone at the bottom creates the agitation. And this vacuum cleaner? It's an apex at the top electric suction cleaner. It was designed to operate it on both alternating and direct current. This would be around 1918. On the table is the pitcher and the catcher. That would be the water jug and a chamber pot. And look at that old bathing suit on the wall. There were restaurants, hotels, an acting troupe here, just to name a few of the entertainments that you could partake in. In our wineries section, you'll discover how this island dominated the wine industry. Five wineries survived prohibition, including our famous Kelly's Island Wine Company. You know, the one that looks like a castle. Just to the left, you'll find a section on our schools, from a one-room schoolhouse to the Stone Schoolhouse, and finally Esty School, which was built in 1901, Education was a high priority for the community. Explore how our school yearbook pictures have changed over the years. Sharing the space, you'll find island churches. There were once five churches on the island. Two still have active congregations. One is part of the History Museum complex, and two have been torn down. As we near the exit, we have a special section for those who served. It features letters from World War II and a remarkable old powder gun. For some of our visitors, this is a trip down memory lane as they recall stories that their grand and great-grandparents told them. In the Civil War, our soldiers were the first to step up and fill the quota. One soldier, Jacob Rush, was sent to Cahaba Prison. He also survived the Sultana explosion. Now we'd like to share some of our most memorable temporary displays. The museum opens in mid-May each year to celebrate International Museum Day. Each year we change our main displays and we are always adding more items to assure that each time you visit it is a fresh experience. Here are some of our most popular previous year displays. In 2017 it was a Kelly's Island Kitchen. The items on display were unusual and featured things you might have found in your grandmother's kitchen. We asked people what their favorite grandma meal was and 65 people responded. We featured such unusual items as an electric toaster from the 1920s, a bread maker patented in 1906, the dough goes inside and you crank it and mixes the dough, a sunbeam mix master a wearing blender, and an ice cream maker patented in 1912. We handed out wooden spoons to celebrate and everyone loved to have their picture taken. In retrospect, however, sending kids home in a car with wooden spoons might not have been the best idea. In 2018, we answered one of our most asked questions. How do we get our electricity? Through posters, old documents, and memorabilia, we shared what has to be one of the most interesting facets of island life. 
from making candles to gas lights to the electric cables that feed the island its electricity. It was all documented in our display. You know, you can pause the show to read each poster. Our original electric cable was installed in 1953, and we have samples of the newer ones. Our visitors found this particular display very electrifying. A second display told the story of island bathing beauties with vintage bathing suits and lots of pictures of islanders enjoying the water. We had so much fun with this, everyone had a photo to contribute. In 2019, we told the story of how fishing got started around the islands. These men were really tough and the work was very demanding. And we gave away coffee mugs you know, to keep you warm when you read about the stormy weather they experienced. Our second display celebrated the 45th anniversary of the Kelly's Island Navy, formed to protest the state plans to take over almost the entire island. 300 people boarded boats and invaded the mainland. There were protest signs, smoke bombs, and a whole lot of negative publicity for the Ohio Department of Natural Resources and the project. Eventually, it was dropped and the Kelly's Island Landowners Association was formed. We hope you enjoyed a little history about our organization and our museum. Feel like you want more? Well, in 2020, our featured displays will be how the islanders viewed the suffrage issue in 1867 and our island doctors. Why not stop by and experience our history firsthand? We are just a short walk from downtown, right next to that great stone church. Our gift shop is a super place to find the most unusual things. And the Parsonage House, it's now our resale shop. You can literally get anything there. Can't visit? Be sure to visit our website, www Kelly's Island Historical .org. We have lots of books about our island's history and loads of interesting content to explore. And, like most museums, we rely on the generosity of our community and the dedicated group of volunteers who make it all possible. Make sure to put us on your must visit list. We can't wait to meet you and share our remarkable history. And finally, we would like to thank Leslie Karenko for volunteering to put this video together and then actually getting it done. Leslie wrote those six books about the island's history, serves on our board, and manages the museum gift shop, and she's still found time to do this project for us.